So uh, what have we done yesterday? Uh, so we looked into NetSuite. So NetSuite is this ERP and the e-commerce application. Who uses it? All the front-end users in, in the company like uh, uh, finance, marketing. Uh, uh, those guys take care of the sales, uh, like order to cash process. And uh, they're also called uh, AR, account receivables, because they get the payments from customer. And then uh, there's one more process called procure to pay, which is like buying from the vendors, buying stuff and paying them. And uh, AP team takes care of that because it's accounts payables. Sorry? Oh, sorry. Sorry. Yes, sir. Thanks for reminding. Uh, I won't show this. Can you guys see the screen now? Yes, we can. Okay, cool. So, uh, NetSuite is used by front end users. Uh, they deal with the customers or vendors, uh, they make the transactions in NetSuite and uh, they perform all the functionality provided by NetSuite. So what do we do? Uh, we are NetSuite consultants. So as a consultant, uh, uh, we may be administrator or we may be uh, a developer or even an architect. So let me tell you what is an architect. Architect is a guy who talks with business users and business users, they want uh, NetSuite to be customized in the way they want it to be. So as an architect, you talk to business, they let you know what they want. They want They'll say, okay, we want sales order form this way. We want this extra fields. We want this extra functionality behind it. And administrator is a guy who does the customizations. So all this uh, without developing, just the customizations, uh, whatever you can do through UI, like user interface, uh, that is done by admin. And developer is a guy who uh, does coding, who writes the scripts. And as I said yesterday, the NetSuite scripting is based on JavaScript. And on top of that, we use NetSuite APIs. So that's our part. We just customize NetSuite. So I explained these two processes today. And now let's start uh, customization. Uh, I started the UI walkthrough. Uh, let's uh, recap what all we've seen. This is recent records. Uh, what's this? This is just, uh, yeah, it shows the dashboard again. This is the dashboard. We have set preferences. That is for the personal uh, preferences, like uh, changing the theme. Se uh, selecting uh, all the settings that you want, uh, that you want to see. That's all on the set preferences. Uh, this is set preferences page. And I told you show internal IDs, make sure it's checked so that when you are scripting, your script should be able to uh, access the, all the fields. Uh, and in order to access the fields, you need to know the fields internal IDs. And only when you uh, check this, you get to know the internal IDs of the fields. So that is uh, under home. And then activities, I told calendar, uh, scheduling tasks and all that normally nobody uses this because every in every uh, at every location we have I mean client location we have Outlook and all that so uh, all these activities are done in Outlook and it's like if a company has 500 employees not all 500 employees are working on NetSuite maybe hardly 100 200 people might be working on NetSuite so there should be a common platform so Microsoft Go Office or uh, yeah mostly it's Microsoft Office or Office 360 or whatever so that's a common application uh, in which all 500 people use it. So that's where we uh, do all our scheduling, all our meetings, all our interactions within our company. So nobody is just actually stopped. Then payments is done by the AP and AR teams who send, who make payments, who get the payments. And don't worry about this. Uh, but uh, you can always uh, look into this. Just check all these options, see all the pages, all the forms, uh, whatever is in there. If you don't understand anything, just go to NetSuite Help over here and uh, type whatever uh, what is your whatever is your question so you can get answers from help. So that's all in payments. Uh, company makes payments from this tab. And then transactions. Uh, this is where major uh, business is run. Uh, in this tab, mostly it's purchasing, purchases and payables. Uh, this is where the procure to pay process takes place, like pur your equations, purchase orders, your bills, uh, payments to vendor and all that takes place. And then sales and customers in this, your order to cash process takes place, uh, like your opportunity, code, sales order, invoices, uh, and item fulfillment, and uh, getting payment from customer and all that. Uh, this is just for the employee, and even this one, nobody, no company uses this. Uh, here, NetSuite provides option for uh, entering the expense reports, tracking time. But see, same same scenario, uh, 500 people, only 100 use NetSuite, so 
it's, it's, it doesn't make sense 100 people are using netsuite for all this and the remaining 400 are using something else so in every organization everybody has to be on the same page like on the same application so that's why uh, every company has uh, uses a separate application for uh, entering the expense reports and tra tracking time and all that and you can go through and see what all these are uh, these are uh, functionalities provided by netsuite but hardly any company uses this just uh, check them yeah, who's this? Hello. Who's that? Hi, sir. Hi, sir. This is Prem, sir. Yeah, Prem. Tell me. So, in, uh, in both of the order to cash for QT process, okay. so we have a different approval stage for everything. If you come to requisition to purchase order and then purchase order to the bill payment. So, do they have separate roles to approve it or who decides uh, these roles to whoever uh, approves it? Okay. There is a workflow that's going on internally in NetSuite. That gets automatic approval to if I create a requisition, I submit it and save it. As soon as it is saved, will it go to approval level two? I mean, if I create a requisition, if a sales team saves a created requisition. Okay, so understood. Prem, Prem, Prem. I understood so your question. You yeah, I understood your question. I understood your question. Let me let me answer you. Okay, I understood your question. So NetSuite doesn't provide any standard approval process. Okay. There there's no approval process provided in NetSuite. For uh, we can have approvals on any form, Just take sales order or take uh, invoice or requisition or POs or bill payments anywhere. NetSuite doesn't provide any approval process. Even in standard, when NetSuite gives us this uh, account, there's no way there is approvals. But we can have appro put approvals on every, every, each and every form. We can have approvals on sales order. That's all custom. Putting an approval process is a custom. Approval process is always custom. There's no standard approval process provided by NetSuite, okay? But, uh, having said that, uh, for purchasing, I mean for POs, or for requisition, for procure to pay process, there's a NetSuite bundle, okay? It's called PAM, PAM, Purchase Approval Matrix, or Purchase Approval Management, okay? So there's a bundle from NetSuite. Uh, it, it's based upon your subscription, like Honeycomb, uh, they have a subscription with NetSuite, okay? Only the NetSuite gets this uh, instance. Some other company XYZ, they may have another subscription. So it's based on subscription. Based upon subscription, we can access some bundles, some NetSuite bundles freely. And some we can't. So it's based on subscription. If Honeycomb has that, uh, can access the free bundle, then we can install the bundle. From the bundle, we'll get, uh, but it's not like we install the bundle and everything is set. Uh, once the bundle is installed, the bundle installs all the custom records, all auto, all the parts, okay? Then we need to go to each and every part and we need to provide data, like who has to approve this, who has to approve that. Uh, for example, POs, okay, purchase orders. For purchase orders less than $10,000, who all should approve? Okay, if X person is creating this PO, who is that Y person who is going to approve this? All these decisions are made within business, okay? Like the, the team, the procurement team, or the invoicing team, or the payments like uh, account, uh, accounts payable team. So accounts payable team, they control the bills, okay, and payments. Procurement team, they control the POs and requisitions. It's like that. Sales team, marketing team, they control the sales orders, invoice. So those teams decides, uh, the head of those teams decides who has to approve what. So in business itself, they decide, they, perform, they, uh, they maintain a structure, they create a structure, okay, according to the structure, we need to pro, uh, set the, make those settings in the bundle. Okay, this is for requisition, like the, the procure to pay uh, bundle we have from NetSuite. Okay, when you come to sales orders, like order to cash, we need to create. This is there is a that's custom. There's no bundle provided by NetSuite. We need to create that bundle. Okay, developers and admin we, together we need to create that bundle. And then we can also put uh, approvals on journals. Even that there is no uh, standard bundle provided by NetSuite, okay? Even that we need to create a, a custom approvals. Understood, friends? So this NetSuite doesn't provide any standard approval process. We do it. See, if NetSuite provides everything, NetSuite does everything, if NetSuite gives everything, then we are not required. NetSuite consultants are not required. Isn't it? When NetSuite is giving everything, why would business hire us to work on NetSuite and give to, uh, to make NetSuite how they want it to look? Just because NetSuite doesn't give everything. NetSuite just uh, gives basic NetSuite facilities, the standard functions. And standard functions, standard features are never 
uh, enough for any company. So Nature might provide 10% of the work we need to do. Remaining 90%, every company has to hire NetSuite consultants, NetSuite admin, developer, or architects, and get the work done. Okay. So approvals, we need to build them. We need to build approvals. Uh, as I said, for purchasing, uh, there is a bundle from NetSuite. We can install that and uh, we can uh, uh, do all the settings in that. Okay. And for rest all, for order to cash process, any forms, any journals, we need to create any custom one. Okay. Okay. Let's go ahead. Uh, that's in transactions. And then lists. Uh, we have all the vendor list, all the customer list, all the employee list uh, working in, in the company like Honeycomb. So everything is under lists. Reportings, we have two kinds of reportings. One is save searches and the other is just report. And we'll see all that when we when we start, uh, when we get into the topic, we'll, uh, we'll get to know more about it. Like uh, when, I, when I listed out all the net admin tasks, see, we have the save searches and reports over here. So when we come to this topic, uh, you guys will get a clear picture of what are save searches and what are reports, okay? Now we're just doing this UI walkthrough, okay? So that's on, under reports. And customizations, this is where developer uh, does a lot of work, even the admin guy. So under lists, records, fields, we create all the custom lists, custom records, custom uh, fields. Uh, you might feel what is custom list, custom record. We'll come to it, okay? <laughs> we'll get to know it. Uh, that's the next part after the UI. So custom forms, uh, forms are nothing but uh, all over your vendor forms, customer forms, sales order form, PO forms, all that. Scripting, this is where developer works. He creates scripts. He deploys the scripts and you can see on records on each record what all scripts are deployed uh, this is all scripting uh, stuff and then plugins i said don't worry about it uh, nowadays nobody uses plugins we just use scripting or an integration tools to integrate metric to other applications then centers uh, you can see kpi settings over here uh, we have suite bundler that's where we uh, what the functionality we create uh, we bundle them together and then we install the bundle in production or some other uh, instance. Then performance, uh, this, this is a new uh, feature from NetSuite, like performance dashboard. Just look at it, uh, you'll get to know. Uh, nobody have started using performance till now. As far as I've seen in my five years of experience with NetSuite. And then documents, uh, in documents we have the file cabinet. Uh, over here we store all the files, all of our uh, scripting files and all the att attachments like sales orders, uh, when uh, on, on these two processes, order to cash and procure to pay, when uh, the company is uh, interacting with vendors or customers, uh, we send data from here to there, we get the data, like we send attachments, we get attachments. So those are all stay, uh, saved here, in, uh, attachments received and attachments sent. And images, this is like a hard drive, okay? Like your system, like a computer has your hard drive, file cabinet is a hard drive for NetSuite. And that hard drive is only for us, only for Honeycomb. So Honeycomb's hard drive in NetSuite is here. Okay, files, file cabinet, over here. And next, templates. So what are templates? So when you're sending emails, uh, you can't write each and every email. When, for example, uh, we have invoices or we have fulfill, item fulfillments. On each item fulfillment, we send an email to the customer saying, hey, we sent you these items which you ordered. Okay, it's uh, mostly the uh, message is almost, sa almost same. Only few things we change. Like the customer name and item name we change but entire rest of the matter would be same so it doesn't make sense you keep on uh, uh, typing each and every email so for that uh, we have templates so we create email templates and in that only those uh, things which we change for each and every uh, customer or vendor uh, those are uh, selected from the transactions so mostly we use email templates and fax and letter. NetSuite provides it, but nobody does that. But you guys can check it, what it is, how it looks like. PDF templates and all these template files. And mail merge, uh, this is like merging, merging mails, emails. So even this, uh, you guys can look into help and uh, see what it does. In help, you, you'll have samples of each and everything. You'll have examples of each, of each and everything. So just uh, uh, do some research in that, you'll get to know. But I will let you guys know all that you need that you'll work on so mail merge i may not tell you in see there's no mail merge because it's hardly used like if you work on netsuit for like five to ten years you may use mail merge once or twice but all these things you'll be using every each and every week so i'll be uh, going through all these uh, important topics uh, which uh, are commonly used 
So we are in documents, done, set up, okay. Uh, just a second, guys. Oh, I'll be back. Got it, So under setup, uh, so under setup, uh, when NetSuite is taken, when NetSuite subscription is taken by a company, the first thing they do is they come to setup. So they set up everything. Firstly, company. Don't worry, you guys will not do all this setup. Okay. Uh, when company purchases subscription from NetSuite, uh, the main people in com in business they do all this. They do a they do all this setup. So in company, you'll find whenever you you join a new project, when you are given your NetSuite uh, credentials, login credentials. When you get inside, you have no other work to do. They didn't give you any requirement, any uh, real work. You, you, are, you have a lot of free time. Then just get into the setup and see. You can uh, find all the information like company information uh, and uh, what are features uh, features that we are using, like order to cash, procure to pay, this inventory management, and many other features that NetSuite provides. So you can get into enable features and see what are features we are using and we are not using. For example, let's get into enable features and see. See, company is using departments, locations, classes, projects, project management is being used. So under ERP, uh, there are few minor settings, uh, use deletion reason, which means whenever you're deleting something, uh, you need to provide a reason, like the deletion transactions. And then multi-language, multiple currencies, so these are all settings that uh, this company is using, Honeycomb is using. And for each, uh, like accounting settings, we have tax settings, transaction settings. You can see uh, we are using estimates, we are using sales orders, return authorization, purchase orders. We are not using request for quote, uh, purchase contacts, blanket POs. And if you want to know what are all these, just click on it. On a click on blanket PO, you'll get a complete description of what is a blanket PO. And then on sales order, you get to know what is sales order. So we have settings for items and inventories. Uh, see, companies using all kinds of items, different kinds of items. We have multiple vendors. Okay, over here using inventory. Uh, there should be inventory management. Yeah, let's see what's here. Yeah, this advanced inventory management. If you come, if the client is using inventory management, then that should be here. This should be selected. Advanced inventory management. Okay. And under employees, we are using expense reports, approval routine. Uh, this is a basic approval routine. So, root purchase requests and expense reports for approval based on approval limits. So, then they might find, uh, as I said, there's a PAM bundle. That bundle might be available for this honeycomb. Then we have CRM settings. CRM is opportunity, your lead, all that. knowledge base support help desk so help desk is your internal help desk so uh, honeycomb hasn't connected uh, netsuite to the internal it help desk of honeycomb so even th that even that's an option but no company does that because every company uses like 50 to 60 applications and they don't want each and every application to be connected to the help desk so that's why they say to each and every employee okay you have an issue just send an email to help desk if this option is selected you can contact help desk of honeycomb from your netsuite but nobody uses that option okay so these are all the company uh, features and you can see all uh, even uh, standard uh, transactions like standard objects customer is an object vendor is an object then we have subsidiary department location okay or we can these are the label of customer is customer okay we can change this instead of customers we can put some other name so honeycomb is just using customer let's see if there's any other name uh, do they change any any name they haven't changed any uh, transaction names. Did they change any transaction name? See assembly on build. They changed to wo on build. And see estimate. They change estimate name to quote. So the estimates are called quotes in Honeycomb. So purchase setup, company setup, and then we have accounting setup. So uh, as I said, in lists you have your accounts, company accounts are present in this. 
uh, even here accounting even here you can see the accounting list uh, the accounts chart of accounts you can see the same page you go to accounting chart of accounts or else you go to lists accounting and accounts mostly most of the times it's the same page let's see okay. these are all the accounts id one id and withholding same thing same page okay okay that's under accounting setup uh, and expense cut accounting lists so all the standard accounting fields uh, or field values they're all present under accounting list uh, we'll get into this look at the filters tab so vendor category is a field and vendor and all the values within vendor category are this so if vendor on a vendor record you may find a field called vendor category so that might that will drop down field uh, when you click on that drop down field you'll find all these values and you'll select you'll be selecting one according to the vendor so these are all settings under vendor and all preferences and from preferences, I don't think uh, we need to do nothing. Uh, we've done much about this. It's all taken care by business, so they do all these preferences. And you come here. These are tax codes, uh, taxes. This tax. This complete section is for tax settings. So every company uh, works with deals with taxes differently. So uh, you need to ask, like, whenever you get into a project, you need to ask, how are we dealing taxes? How are we dealing taxes for? the company uh, functions globally the company sells and buys products not only in us like in europe asia everywhere then to ask uh, that how are we managing taxes uh, worldwide globally so that's under accounting and under company also if you scroll down there's some okay you see here netsuite accord information uh, so uh, the subscription uh, that Anikom has taken with NetSuite, you may find some information under this. For example, if you see uh, view billing terms, no, let's see view billing information. Open this. Uh, let's see if we find anything. See, so whatever subscription Anikom has with NetSuite, in that uh, these are the billable components. Okay, this is currently provision quantity. So this is the vault. Honeycomb paid for and this is what they have used till now. So fi file cabinet, Honeycomb has paid for 10,000 MB. That's in the subscription. Until now they used only 68.99 MB. So it's like that. You go down, subsidiary, they can, 10 subsidiaries you can use and we already used 10. It's like the total storage size, we have 10,000 units, we just use 754 units. It's like that. And users, full access users, the 20 users are, um, Next will give 20 users, we just use 11 users. So, yeah, you, you'll never have to work on this, but when you get time, just look into this. You'll get a little more about your company and its subscription with NetSuite. So, that's another accounting, and then sales. Even sales uh, team they have their setup here. Uh, they set up customer statuses like CRM lists, like accounting lists. We even have CRM lists, like uh, these fields are related to C uh, CRM guys, like sales guys, marketing guys. So see contact category, contact role, new note type. So these are all like, uh, these are fields and on that field, uh, there should be a value, you, you need to create values here. Like, let's see if there is any win-loss reason. Yeah, there are four reasons. So if there's a field called win-loss reason on that under, it's a drop-down field with values and these four will be the values. So that's uh, so, uh, under sales setting, okay. Next, you come to marketing. Your marketing has their own settings, email addresses, online customer forms, promotional URLs, all the campaign management. So, marketing, you know, marketing guys, they need to market the, uh, like what all products Honeycomb is selling. And for that, they might, like, you might have heard event management, they do campaigns and all that. So, uh, it should provide a campaign management feature for them. You guys will do nothing over here. Just, you can just check what the company is doing uh, with this information. And then there's support. Uh, don't worry, this we are not going to use this support. There is another uh, location where uh, we'll contact NetSuite for support. Yesterday I got email from someone, uh, one of you guys, that uh, what if we have an issue in NetSuite, whom to contact? So we, if there is something we are unable to understand, uh, we don't have any answers, or uh, there's some standard process which we know that it works, but it isn't working for any some unknown, unknown reason, we'll always contact NetSuite support. So it's not here, don't worry. There's some other uh, uh, place where we'll contact support. I'll uh, tell you guys later. It's in the next tab, support here, okay. 
So site builder, this is for the e-commerce. Uh, since we are not uh, gig, uh, going to get the e-commerce training, so this is irrelevant for us. So for example, as I said yesterday, Sears is a company that uses NetSuite. They have their Sears website. So to project the website, to put components in the website and get the information back into NetSuite, they use this site builder. They build their websites from this. So building a website from NetSuite and maintaining it is e-commerce. Then import export is an important functionality. Uh, mostly you will be doing not only customization within NetSuite, not only uh, like playing with NetSuite and uh, making it the way net business wants it to be, not only that, outside of NetSuite, uh, business even, every company has data, right? Like this is the IT department, data management. There is company data. You know these transactions, in NetSuite we have transactions, okay? All the sales order, POs, these are all, this is conventional data, okay? And uh, this is company, Honeycomb's data. And this data is not just sitting in NetSuite. Most of the companies, they do have duplicate the data. They have this data in somewhere else. So NetSuite data, they take it to any other tool, like for example, analytics tool. Okay, they put this data in the analytics tool and they play with the data, they do something like uh, budgeting or planning or uh, what do you say? Uh, I'm not doing the term, but yeah. Uh, like you analyze uh, how did uh, how the company uh, performed all those uh, we, uh, there are some tools analytic tools so when you take all data uh, every company takes data from NetSuite and puts in all those applications and performs the functions that apl those applications provide so there will be import and export of data so data comes to NetSuite goes goes out of outside of NetSuite so the only way we know the data can come into NetSuite other than people getting into NetSuite and creating everything it's import CSV records. So you might get a CSV file from business saying, hey, there's a list of customers, just upload them into NetSuite. So this is what you'll use. Okay, you have CSV file. And make sure it's always CSV file. If someone gives you Excel, you need to convert it into CSV file because uh, you can't upload data from Excel file. It's only CSV uh, the NetSuite allows. So this is that part, import CSV records so you can import uh, from CSV files into all your objects, like your customer object, your transactions, everything. And then you have uh, users and roles. Uh, even this is used by admin. So uh, whenever you need to give access to somebody or uh, you have all the employee, uh, uh, employee uh, accounts, right? Over here, manage users. Let's see what is manage users. You will have all the employees. Uh, in lists under Employees, you have employees. These employees, uh, let's see if the list is same. How many employees are here? It's 96. So, Honeycomb currently has 96 employees. That's why under lists, employees, we have this list, okay, 96 people. And over here, manage users, okay. This is under setup, users, manage users. Over here, you can see only 50 people. So, what does this imply? So, 50 people in Honeycomb are using NetSuite, okay. And over here, there are 96, totally people working in uh, Honeycomb. So over here, you go to each and every employee, there are some duplicates, uh, don't worry about that. Uh, so you go to each and every employee record and give him access. So this is how the employee record looks like. And you have all the information like this is a guy who is working in Honeycomb, who has an HV access, his communication, his address, his HR details, his time tracking. It's all out there, but nobody uses it. Commission, related records, marketing. Under access, you have this. You provide roles. So this guy, who is he? Fats Aralar. Oh, what a name. So this guy has admin access in NetSuite, in Honeycomb NetSuite. Okay. So whenever uh, you're given a task like uh, add these roles to these people, so you need to come here. Set up users, manage users, and go to each and every employee's record and uh, give all the... Uh, role accesses in this under access tab. Okay. That's uh, giving access to users, and then we have roles. What are we giving? What are we giving access? We are giving access to roles, right? Admin is a, administrator is a role, so there are some other roles. Uh, so wh where are those roles? Wh what is there inside those roles? So that's here. Set up users roles, manage roles. So under roles, you won't find admin because administrator is, uh, that's hidden. It's, uh, the administrator has complete access. Administrator can do everything. There is nothing that admin can't do. Everything an admin can do, okay? So 
we won't find admin here but these are all the roles see honeycomb has these roles senior executive engineering role inside sales so people who are senior executive they'll get this role uh, so people who are working on assembly they get this role uh, people who are working on shipping department they get this role so these are the roles created and these roles are assigned to people so what is in this role all permissions so look into this one example shipping role so in shipping this this is how a role looks like so these are all permissions so what all permissions does shipping role has look into this all transactions purchase order full permission so you can do everything you can create edit update delete everything you can do so look here find a transaction it's a view so whenever there's a view permission that means you can just view that access payment audit audit log so this shipping guy can only view it he can't edit or create or delete sales order see it's a full access all the time return authorization it's only view so you can see only authorization return authorization, but you can't create them or delete them so these are the permissions these are transaction permissions then you have reports uh, report permissions you have lists all the list permissions these are standard lists. these are not custom lists okay these are standard lists so vendors also list customers also come under this but uh, customers not here so uh, there's no permission for customer then so this shipping guys can maybe customers should be there let's see shipping guys why don't they have customers they should be having customers too let's see customers do we have customers yeah we have customers see shipping guy doesn't have shipping people don't have customers they can't see customers currently but that, that doesn't make sense <laughs> because shipping guys they are shipping to customers so they should be able to see customers <laughs> So that's list. These are list permissions, and then the setup permissions. So only published dashboards is given to shipping. They can't do any other setup. So even here, as I said, uh, the guys, those who do all this company setup, accounting setup, they need to have permission in the role, whatever role they are in. They have the permission over here. Custom record permission. We do create custom records. So for the even for that, we can give permissions. These are mostly bundle. You can see so suite social. Those are coming from a standard NetSuite bundle. So. Uh, this guy can have uh, this guy has uh, shipping guys have uh, permission to view or uh, full permissions for this uh, custom records you'll get to know what are custom records uh, very soon so these are roles and that's how you work on roles and then there is a customization this is seligo seligo is a that's an integration tool so as i told uh, we send data from netsuite uh, to other third parties using some integration tools uh, there is one such tool called Seligo, which is uh, within NetSuite. So all other integration tools, they are like they are equal to NetSuite or the larger than NetSuite. They, are, they have their own www.boomi.com. They have their own uh, websites. But Seligo, this guy, he doesn't have a separate website. There's no Seligo.com. Yeah, there's Seligo.com, but you'll contact the Seligo company. That's it. But it's not like you open Seligo.com, you work on it. So Seligo is included within NetSuite. And it depends on our uh, subscription with NetSuite. So since Honeycomb has subscription, I guess they have. That's why we can see Seligo here. Integration. Yeah, we can see integ Seligo integrator here. So Seligo integrator, what it does, it sends data from NetSuite and uh, gets data from outside too. Uh, mostly uh, it's in save searches. From NetSuite, we can send save searches to other third party applications. And also we can get data. In form of files and those files uh, we can uh, like it's like import export but since we have csv import nobody will use the import option in seligo mostly it's used for sending data out if there's no option if there's no seligo integrator how will we send data out for example we have save search what we do we run the save search the results we just uh, download them as a csv or excel file or pdf file that's it and it's downloaded to our system it doesn't go anywhere so if you wanted to go to somewhere like to a third party application so you come to integration you go to seligo integrator and you uh, create a process in the process you select okay this save search where do you want to send you create a connection to other how do you create connection like when are you sending data from seligo integrator with the netsuite to a third party application for example say there is a third party application called blackland or trust it okay these are all tools which i work on so that's why i'm taking those names don't worry about when i say those names so uh, how do how does it send data there you need to have the website the url of that uh, third party you need to have a credential you use a name and password so using those three data 
you create a connection from Celigo integrator to a third party. And that's how you connect. And also where do you want the data to be sent in the third party application? You can, they, can, they should even provide a path where they want us to send files. So you want to set that path and then, okay, this is a safe search we want to send. How do you want to send? Do you want to send complete safe search results or not? We have a lot of settings in that. So based upon that, we can send our safe search results from NetSuite to third party applications. So that's all on the setup and support. Okay, what is setup? What is, sorry, what is support? So as I said, when, uh, let's see if this is that or not. Actually, this is, uh, no, yeah, this is support, okay. If you want to contact NetSuite support, you just click on support. You can see a NetSuite account center. Currently, we don't have permission to uh, uh, contact NetSuite support, but don't worry. Whenever you go to a, a project, uh, you'll be given a sandbox, okay? As I said, all your work will be done in sandbox. Whenever business says, hey, we want this functionality to be done. So we implement that in sandbox. We test in sandbox, even business tests in sandbox, and then we push it to production. Production is the actual life. Uh, which the business users are using and interacting with customers and vendors and creating transactions. So, how can we connect to support? Not in Sandbox. Certainly, if you try to go, when you're in Sandbox, you go to support, you'll certainly, you'll always see this. Not enough permission, you can't contact support. So, only from production account, you can contact NetSuite support. So, if you're not given pro production access, and you need to contact NetSuite support. You need to inform your manager or your uh, superior that, hey, we have an issue in NetSuite. Uh, looks like a bug or enhancement or something. Uh, it's not working, a standard process is not working. We need to contact support, but for contact support, we need a production access. So are you going to give me access, production access to contact support or will you contact support? I'll give you the information, you can contact, but nobody will dare to say, hey, okay, I'll contact support. Mostly they'll say, okay, we'll give you access. You deal with it because if, this, if it's a scripting issue, okay, you are the developer. You are trying to write some function, some mm -hmm. script. It's not working. Some API, some command is not working properly. You tell your superior, hey, this is what not working properly. Please contact NetSuite support. He will not uh, uh, take that on him and uh, contact support. Hey, this script is not working. Because he's a, he doesn't know anything about the scripting. You are the guy who scripted. You know about scripting. So most of the times, mostly, not most of the time, each and every time he'll say, okay, you go ahead, contact support, and make sure you fix the problem, you get it fixed by NetSuite support. So remember this point, whenever you need to contact NetSuite support, you need to have production access. Only from production, within production, get into support. Here you'll have NetSuite account center, click on it, uh, the page will open up. Uh, then you'll, have, you'll, uh, you'll find the options, contact support, click on that, there'll be options, select the which options are appropriate, and then we'll give you a description, like this not working, that's not working, provide your details. Create the case, create the, uh, submit the ticket, and NetSuite support will contact you back. And most of the times they'll do a WebEx session or a go-to meeting, and they'll see, uh, they try to see what you are trying to do, uh, or look at your code. Or sometimes they they may not even ask you for a WebEx or a screen share. Well, you can just give them information. Hey, this script is not working, and they look at the script at their end because NetSuite always has a replica of your account. You might think, hey, if they have replica, they will see all of our confidential information. Yes, they will see. NetSuite knows each and everything about our business, but that's the trust. So NetSuite, it has like 2,000 customers. Everybody, every client, every company is using NetSuite. NetSuite has all the data of these 2,000 customers, but don't worry, it's secure. NetSuite doesn't share this data to anyone, and it's 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 legal. It's it's in the legal contract, uh, in the subscription. NetSuite is not supposed to share. If there is any one such case where NetSuite leaks a data of any one client of its thousands of clients, NetSuite will lose its integrity and no, trust me, nobody going forward will uh, take NetSuite or use start using NetSuite or uh, take a subscription with them. So not only with NetSuite, all other like for example Salesforce or Workday or any PeopleSoft, everybody, all those companies, they have their customer data, but it's all secured. Even most of their uh, Employees can't see the data. It's only some authorized people who see the data or support people who see it. But support people, even they can't steal the data and you know, um, do something uh, fraudulent with it. Okay, that's under support. And uh, after support, whatever tasks you, whatever tabs you see, these are all like, as I said, bundles. We have additional bundles, right? Uh, uh, and for approval matrix, we install a bundle. So these are all additional bundles. You need not uh, worry about them. 
So let's see what Honeycomb has. Honeycomb has huge social bundle. Uh, let's see what is this huge social. Even I've never looked at it. So uh, this looks like a integration, integrating it uh, with some other uh, tool. We don't have much information. So you can Google suit social and see what it is, what that application does, what the functionality does in NetSuite. Fixed assets. So fixed assets, I have an idea on fixed assets. So when you are buying, uh, so Honeycomb is a company, okay, it has an office, okay. So in the office, it needs to uh, pay the lease for the building, for the office location, and buy furniture in the office, have uh, cube, make cubicles, and create cabins, and create what not, okay, create a cafeteria and all that. So those are all assets. So all that assets are maintained here. You may think, okay, this is this all comes under procurement. No, that's different. Procurement is different, assets are different. Procurement is something which you are, uh, which you uh, take as a service. So it's a service. Uh, like for example, you are you are a contractor, okay, you are a consultant. You fall under that procurement category. When Honeycomb is hiring you as a uh, consultant, uh, where is, how where is that documentation? Where is that process taking place? It's under the vendor, the procurement part. So there is a vendor. Uh, most of you might have uh, worked in the past. You might know the concept of vendor. There's a like as a consultant, you work for X Y Z client, but the X Y Z client is not directly contacting you. They are contacting some other vendor, and that vendor pays to your employer. It's like that, right? There are levels. So that's how. Uh, that's why these all falls in the vendor category. So we are consulting, it's consulting services. So those all come under procurement. And assets is like paying the lease of the building, getting the furniture, uh, getting the cubicles and all that. And uh, you can think, okay, what about computers? What about systems? They doesn't come under assets. They come under procurement because uh, in procurement, there is something called when you buy it, you even return it, right? Or it gets end. Isn't it like consulting, sir? You are a consultant. You work for three months and you go. That's it. So you come, you go. It's only for a limited period. So that all comes under procurement. And even laptops. Uh, so HP gives us laptop. If it's not working, we send it back to HP. That's it. It's gone back. So it's not permanent. It's temporary things. All those comes under procurement. And under fixed assets, it's all what you buy. Even lease. Okay, you leased it. And you buy this, you uh, make this furniture, cubicles, uh, game rooms and all that. You buy, a ga in game room you have some games, you have ping pong table, you have the snookers table, you have some video games uh, table, video game missions. Those all fall under these fixed assets. So just uh, research on the fixed assets, see how it works, uh, what all are present, what is the setup in fixed assets and all that. And the fixed assets. Uh, since company Honeycomb is buying all these assets, Honeycomb can sell it. So under fixed assets, we always maintain a market price, like asset price, asset depreciation, all that. Just now I saw depreciation. Depreciation is when the value is going down. So the company just bought uh, a furniture, like a sofa set uh, to, to be placed in the reception area for guests to sit on. So it always uh, maintains the rate of okay, the market price because it can it can sell it off. So even even that process, that functionality, that feature is available in, under this fixed assets module. These are modules. Okay, suite social is a module. Fixed asset is a module. This demo framework this is a module. And sales, they have something under this. Let's see what is under sales. It's nothing. Just internal sales tools tab. Okay, this is this is not a bundle or something. Uh, the sales guys they just created a tab for themselves. They have nothing in it. Don't worry, you won't see these kind of tabs. After support, if you see any tabs in the projects you're working, those are something, some functionality, third party bundles which have been installed to and supports and uh, provides extra features. Knowledge base, even this is not available in most of the uh, client uh, locations. So Honeycomb created one tab, knowledge base. The, maybe it's Honeycomb knowledge base. They have all their files here, manufacturer information, other information, the payment and pricing policies. Yeah, they have all these links over here. So, so this is a UI. Uh, so we finally completed the UI walkthrough. So we just finished these two stages. Okay, now we get into the actual admin tasks. So let's start. Uh, we still have 15 minutes left. Uh, let's cover one or two points. Uh, custom forms. Let's see first custom forms. What are custom forms? 
So we know uh, we have to process order to cash, procure to pay. What are the forms within it? We have sales order form. We are We have opportunity form, quote form, purchase order forms. And we have all different forms. So we we can uh, NetSuite provides standard form for each. So customization forms. Okay, entry forms. You have the custom customers and vendors. They are uh, under entry. And transaction form. You have all the transactions like opportunity, sales, quote. Purchasing, requisition, they all are the transaction forms. Okay, let's see each one. Let's open one entry forms and let's open transaction forms. So when you come under entry forms, you see what are what do we have we under what do we have under entry forms? The some of the item forms, employee, contact forms, inventory, contact, employee, and we even have, we'll even have vendor. Yeah, we have vendor. So so NetSuite provides a standard form, standard vendor. And from that, you can see here, these are all standard. Okay, NetSuite provides a standard customer form, but no, no company uses the standard form. We always customize it. We create our own custom forms. So, Honeycomb is not using the standard customer form. We used it. We customized it. Uh, we added new fields. We moved the fields here and there. And what is the customer form we're using? Let's see. Uh, let's do it. And, uh, subtype. Okay, and customer form. Which customer form are we using? Okay, this is the one we are using currently. Customer form uh, 12, this is what we are currently using. So we can create as many custom forms we want out of each and then out of that which one we want uh, to be used by business, you can just prefer it. So let's see, employee. So you can see even employee forms, there are four employee forms, okay, out of which two are standard and then two are created ones. Uh, two created custom forms are na named as Ramsey employee form and custom employee form. So out of this Ramsey employee form is the one which is preferred. So when a business user comes and creates a employee, this form will be opened by default. I'll show you how the form looks like. Let's see, this is the vendor form. So this is employee form. So whenever a new employee is, uh, will, should be created next week, uh, the person who is creating, he opens this form and enters all the details. And we as consultants, as uh, NetSuite contractors or admin or developer, we customize these forms. So if there someone is creating an employee, he says, okay, I don't like this layout. I don't want some of the fields here. I want to remove these fields, hide some fields. So that's when they contact us. Hey, we, we want some changes. We want some updates. We want some customization to be done. And we do that. So how do we do that? So this is a form. Uh, let's look at some other forms too. Okay. Under, under transaction forms, see, we have payment, invoice, sales order. Let's uh, do by type. Okay. See all bill, bill credit, bill of materials, cash sale, check. Don't worry, not all companies use all these forms. Uh, some companies, I, I've seen, I've hardly seen any company using all the forms. Okay. So mostly each and every client might use might use few forms. Uh, look at this credit card, credit memo, customer deposit, deposit. If you don't know what is Deposit. What is customer refund? Just Google it, or uh, under help also you can. If you click customer refund, you'll get to know about it. There will be a complete description on it. So invoice form. Let's see Texara invoice form. You open it. You can, uh, let's see how it looks like. So this is how it looks like. Since it is not preferred form, I guess someone just created it as a part of assignment. That's why it doesn't look organized. It doesn't make sense. This lo this looks stupid. It's not properly organized. Yeah. The structure itself is not. It doesn't look good. So if someone is creating an invoice business, they open and they see a form like this. Mm, certainly, they wouldn't be satisfied. They wouldn't like this form. Hey, what is this? We pay millions of dollars for NetSuite. Is this how we'll have a invoice form? Not at all. So they'll ask us. Hey, developer. Hey, admin. Make changes. I don't want this. So we sit with them. If there's no architect, or else the architect sit with them. And ask, hey, okay, how do you want the changes? They say, okay, we want these fields over here. We want few fields. These are the internal fields here. And remove some fields or move some fields to other tabs, under custom tab or somewhere else. So those will be our tasks. Okay, how do we do that? So this is how front end looks like. So where is that back end? How we do that? Okay, we have invoice form. On this form, we need to make changes. Look over here, customize, customize form. Or else you can even do it from some other place. Uh, where is that? Customization forms. Okay, transaction forms. Okay, you go in here. 
and you search for that invoice form okay this invoice form takes our invoice form you come here you add, click edit and even here even this takes you to the customization form so look at this and also here I click customize form and same thing so you have two places you can directly go from customization forms transition forms edit or else you can just open uh, a new invoice from here sales create invoice you can create or else you go to any invoice even on any invoice you can uh, come to this customized page let me show you so create invoices now go to list let's go to invoice so today we might uh, end with forms and tomorrow we'll continue with field vendors etc so here are, here is a list of invoices that i'm going as so let's open any invoice so if there is a problem on this invoice you might get an email from business saying hey there's some problem with the invoice okay you open the invoice you see okay okay they say hey i don't like this bring all these fields to the left side to this column first column okay from this invoice itself you can do customize customize form instead of okay going to again going to customization forms transaction forms and you don't know which invoice form is this are they using the default form or did they change the invoice form they're using some other form so it's better you come to the invoice click customize forms from there and you come here so see it's all same here you see see this we open texara form but that invoice is present in hm product invoice form so that's why it's better if they say there's an issue on a sales order go to the sales order and click the customize form it will take you to that uh, form that custom forms customization page which is used by this sales order so you come here you will see the name and then some information uh, this print template so which template is used which email template is used a uh, disclaimer this disclaimer uh, information is uh, it goes on to the printout of this uh, invoice and then over here you see tabs okay uh, one second let's go to the invoice okay this invoice right okay not this employee let's go to that oh i don't see it okay no, but let's go to it again create invoices list okay we open an invoice okay so if HM, okay let's see tabs what are what do we have under tabs so on the invoice these are the tabs items billing shipping gross profit activities history these are all tabs and you see all that items promotions orders so these are all the tabs available for under invoice form so whichever ones you want you can click show or else remove it if you click show that will be uh, visible on the invoice okay and we have tabs we have screen fields so screen fields are the fields which appear on the invoice screen these all fields so when they ask hey move this field from here to here so that's uh, all those you do it here if it's there's a main main is nothing but it's a header so this is main these fields are on main uh, fields that are under these tabs they are not on main okay only those fields over here they are on main and here you can see primary information that's a uh, field uh, like it's called uh, let's see Screen fields, no, it's a section, it should be a section. I don't see it here, but it's a field section. I can create field groups, or oh, sorry, it's called field groups. So, you can create field group called primary information and put some fields under it uh, that we can see over here. Uh, when you go to main screen fields, you have customer, job, date, so show or not, make it mandatory so that uh, if you don't enter the value, you can't save the invoice. And how do you want it to be displayed, normal or inline text? which means uh, nobody can enter it manually it should be entered through script disabled so you can't see the value the field will not be uh, visible and checkbox default if it's a checkbox field you will uh, find here an option here and description and label this is a label is what uh, how it looks you can you can always change the label so see entity is the customer's actual name that will change as customer that's how it's shown on the invoice and then column break column breaks nothing but okay after this five fields you want next field to go to next column so over there you put a column break on the field last field you can put, put a column break so currency there's a column break let's see if currency is here okay maybe we'll have a different form so column breaks space before oh, don't worry about this nobody uses it same row as previous even this when you are when you're using column break that's not really, only if you don't use column breaks and you leave it to next field to uh, on its on its wish when to create a new column in, in that scenario if you want two fields to be side by side I mean uh, 
above and below then you need to click this okay this should be same and similar as previous okay and if you want to move a field from uh, header on main to some other some tab like uh, a custom tab or a, okay what all tabs you have okay you have shipping tab so you want to move sales rep on the shipping tab what do you do sales rep is on the main but you want it to move to shipping tab you use this move elements to, between sub tabs don't forget this okay whenever you want to move elements from one tab to other or header to a tab or a tab to header always use this move elements between sub tabs okay and then uh, on the screen fields you will have all the field settings and then you have actions okay one more thing under uh, this okay these are all fields okay on any transaction form there are two things fields and columns these are all fields okay and what are columns columns are here the main transaction the items okay this is an invoice which means you are selling something to the customer what are you selling this is the item okay this tab on this tab you have that information so in this tab these are not fields item is not field quantity is not field these are columns make sense right those which are just like this straight which are side uh, left to right they're all uh, fields and those which are like uh, which have data from top to bottom um, those are columns so these are all columns okay and though if when you want to customize these columns move this column in front of description or add a new column then all that over here you come under screen fields get into columns so you have all the column data okay you can move each and every column. For example, you want to move this order. Double click on this order and just move it top. So you know it's moved up. That's how you move fields up and down. And that's all under screen fields. And then you have actions. Actions are buttons like you can have accept payment button. As I said, uh, sometimes you may find a button on in sales order, you may find a button create invoice. So the buttons are here. Delete. Uh, so you have cancel, reset, save, it's like that. These are standard buttons, but some buttons, some of there are some other standard buttons, and those are here. And custom actions, uh, custom actions are nothing but if you want to create a custom button. But we have an option to create a custom button from here, but nobody uses that because custom buttons are mostly everybody creates from the scripts. So from script itself, we create a custom button. When someone clicks on the button, the actions that should be performed, we uh, have that inside the script. So. Admins will be using this, but certainly they will not use it because admin is not the guy who will put functionality behind the button. It's a developer who puts the functionality behind the button using scripting. So developers, they will certainly not come here, create the button and then do from scripting. It doesn't make sense. You work in two places. So developers, they create a button from script itself and put the functionality behind it from script also. So this one, mostly no one uses. but. Uh, whenever you get into project, you have free time, just look into all your transaction forms and see if they have any custom actions, if the admins create any buttons. If they create a, create a button, then you can ask them, hey, uh, where is the script uh, that has a functionality behind this button and all that. Then we have lists, okay, we have items, billable items, billable, these are the lists which are present on the invoice. List is nothing but, uh, this is a list, items is a list. Okay. We can call it sub list also. Because why we call it sublist? Uh, for example, we have a field terms. When you when you are entering a value on the on the uh, field terms, okay, you edit this. Let's see if it gets okay. And you come here, click this. What is this? This is a list. Okay, this is a field. Terms is a field, and this is a list. And you can't call this a list, and also this items also a list. Item this is sublist. List is in all the fields, not all the fields. Okay. Because this is not a list field, this is just a preform text where you enter the email ID. Okay. These are drop downs where you have a list that's all drop down fields. And that's why items are called sublists. Anything you have like this, anything you have a table in the tab, that's all sublist. Okay. And that's all. Uh, these are the standard lists you have. And then custom code, nobody does this. Everybody uses uh, this thing scripting scripts. So nobody uses this. Don't worry. And then roles. So we have a form, invoice form, and you don't want this form to be used by everybody. Not all roles should be using it. So you come here to the form, customize form, get into roles. 
or they are creating a uh, separate uh, form for a separate role. So just come here and click that controller. Okay, controller will have only controller can create invoices in this form. So like that. Preferences. I uh, can see what are all those. You can click on those and you can read the description. Link forms. So from invoice, it goes to credit memo. Uh, which credit memo form it should go? From invoice, it's going to a quote. Which quote form should it go? So even this will be selected uh, in all on all transaction forms. So when you go to get into project, just look on the transaction forms, customize it, uh, look under this link forms. Okay, which forms are they using? Because every client they'll have multiple, they'll create multiple forms of each record, each type. And then we have history. Okay, who created this? Who updated? See, Mr. Nasima already has changed something. He has worked on it. Sam David, okay, I did something. I missed one. Zahir Abbas, he did something on this. Yeah, okay. okay, these guys are practicing on this. Prem, Zahir. Uh, Prem, I see you, uh, you've done a lot of changes on this. So let's see who created this. You can even see that. We go to the final page. And, okay, this is created by a person called Alex Mill. <laughs> he is employee of Hong Kong, for sure. Okay, guys, so this is all about uh, the forms from tomorrow we'll get into the fields how a field is created and how the lists are created and then we'll go ahead uh, these are our uh, topics admin topics so i've shared this i've sent an email to all of you guys go through it if you want to know about it in advance even before i uh, inform you guys about it go to help you always have help let the help and look into help and get to know and i forgot one more thing i guess when you go to support not only this is support, but you have suit answer something here. Okay, you have this is okay. Help is what you can see all the documentation. Okay, you'll have all the description, everything you can. Any question you'll have answer. Every uh, functionality feature of, of within NetSuite is explained here. Okay, with examples, this NetSuite account center to contact NetSuite support and if there's an issue, try to get it fixed with them. NetSuite user group this is external. Okay, there's a NetSuite user group uh, website. So all the users who are working on NetSuite and all of those from different different companies or uh, it's a person, uh, like a uh, individual freelancer, anybody who works on NetSuite, they can register on user group, they have any question, they post a question and anybody can answer. So if you create, if you create an account, you can see what all people are asking, what all people are responding. So going through it, you'll gain some information, gain some knowledge on NetSuite. Uh, for, to in order to get the uh, get onto the user group, you need to be in a in a you need to get a project. You need to get uh, your credentials, NetSuite credentials, using that credential, using that company's credential. Because uh, if I am an employee of Honeycomb, I'll, my email ID will be uh, Sam David at Honeycomb. So that at Honeycomb is important. So NetSuite user group only accepts those emails. If you go there, register from gmail.com, I don't think they will accept. At least a couple of years back, they were not accepting, but you can try. You can see if they're accepting uh, even your Gmail, uh, email ID too. So that is for external, everybody who is uh, working on NetSuite, they, it's their community, discussion community. And we also have suite answers. Suite answers is nothing but uh, all the things in help, all help uh, documents will be in suite answers. And also, uh, if uh, some, uh, if any person, any, like if you are working uh, in Honeycomb or NetSuite, and you're asking a question to a NetSuite support. NetSuite support sometimes if they feel okay, this is an important, this guy has brought up an important issue, we fixed it for him, and this is this thing should be known by everybody. So they add that to suit answers. Even those things will be suit answers. If you want to ask any question, just go to suit answers and type the question. See if you find any article which is related to your question. Okay, so these are the things where you can uh, by which means you can find help. So let's conclude uh, today's session. Here uh, we just finished first three steps. So from tomorrow we'll start fields, columns, and lists. Let's see how they are created, how they work, and what is the functionality. Okay, guys. Uh, see you all. Oh, sorry to uh, I forgot to mention. Uh, I'm gonna uh, tomorrow will not be having any class. So because tomorrow I'll be I'm going out uh, out of town. So I will fly tomorrow evening at six. So I won't be available uh, tomorrow, and I'll be back on Monday night. So Mostly, I don't think it's appropriate to set up a session when I'm on uh, vacation. Uh, I even I won't be completely. I can't concentrate completely, and it's even wasting your time. So uh, I'll be back on Monday. Uh, so next Tuesday we'll have our session. 
I say, as I said, uh, rest all, we will we'll complete all the admin tasks in next in just four sessions. So, next Tuesday to th Friday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we will complete uh, admin training. So, make sure you guys are available from Tuesday to Friday. And I uh, hope you guys will get uh, got your access. Uh, just go through, go through the account and uh, just do some research and see what all you guys can find, what all you can get to know. And I may send out an assignment too, but what do I send out now? We just looked into forms, so I may or may not. But uh, but certainly next few, next week, uh, once we get into fields, columns, lists, uh, maybe every day or, or like once every two days, I'll send out an assignment. Uh, if you guys practice it well, and good for you guys. You get to know more, and you're a little busy for you. If you practice only then once you go to get into a project and you get a requirement you can easily work on it because you practiced on it or else then again it will be a pain for you guys to know how to do it and get it done okay so i'll see you guys on uh, tuesday i'll send out the meeting invite on tuesday morning mostly we'll uh, we'll be having this uh, same timings like between six to eight uh, we'll be having the sessions okay see you all guys have a good weekend yeah. 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 Thanks, guys. All the best. Uh, keep practicing, and I also keep enjoying. <laughs> it's it's not only uh, this is not the only thing you guys need to do. See you there. Okay. Good night, everybody. Yeah.